The RX 7900 XTX is known to reach around 360 watts while gaming, at least the cheaper models, and because of this, some people choose to limit the power usage of the card. Doing so, you can lower the power bill, you have less heat exhausted, and reduce fan noise. In this video, I'm gonna show how much performance you're gonna lose, if any, if you choose to reduce the maximum power by 10% compared to the default setting. The Sapphire Pulse RX 7900 XTX can be configured to use 10% less power or to push it to use 15 more. I'm gonna undervolt the low and high power profiles to show you the difference in performance in games compared to the default power profile. This model can go up to a bit above 360 watts by default, close to 420 watts when the power is set to plus 15% and around 330 watts when set to minus 10%. If you enjoy this kind of videos, consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow, hit the like button and drop a comment below and let me know if you tune your car to squeeze more performance out of it or just leave it as it is. Before we move to the side-by-side -side game runs, I'm gonna show you the undervolted profile used in the benchmarks for low and max power. I'm using MSI Afterburner to tune the card alongside AMD Adrenaline minimal installation. I tested these profiles for some time in multiple games and on my card these ones are stable. Now if you are interested in the system configurations, please check the video description. Now I'm gonna show some side-by-side -side game runs and after I will compile all the data in a chart to paint a better picture. Hey there.
looking at the performance chart, as expected, the high power profile used delivers the best results, but the difference is not that big compared to the default one. When we take a look at the low power profile, we see that, thanks to the undervolt, the performance loss is minimal compared to the default one, so if you are thinking of going this route, make sure to tweak the voltage of the GPU and maybe play around with the memory clocks. And here are the performance differences displayed in percentage compared to the default profile. You guys can decide which profile is worth it or not. I also had a look at Total War of Arrow using medium settings. The differences are displayed on the screen right now. In situations where your GPU is not 100% utilized or not power constrained, the profile with the best interval can sustain the highest clocks and because of this there is no performance difference between the low and max power profiles. I checked using medium settings outcast 2 and here are the side by side runs with the stats displayed on the screen. Here the max power profile delivered the best performance while the low power profile was not far behind the default one. I hope this helps in painting a better picture. Max power always wins in situations where the GPU can use the extra power to reach higher clock speeds, but this difference can be mitigated by undervolting. As expected, the best performance you will get is at max power with undervolt. You can also undervolt the default profile, thus reducing the performance difference when compared to the max power profile. Actually, the best course will always be to undervolt your GPU at any given power, but this video was intended to show that you can reduce the power consumption by 10% and still build close to the factory settings only if you choose to tune the card to squeeze the most out of it. This process is time consuming and requires a lot of testing to find the best undervolt combined with core frequency for your card. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.